Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate your presence and time. So before I start my talk today, let us all start, our talk, let us all start with a small experiment. So I would like to divide the auditorium into three sections. That is section one, section two, and section three. And now to start with, I would like the people in section one alone to make a sound by clapping their hands, not too loud, just a gentle snap on the count of one, two, three. Okay, let's do it. One, two, and three. Was that loud and audible? No. Now I would like both, that is section one and section two, to do the same on the count of three. Okay, one, two, and three. That was a bit noticeable. Now for the final one, I would like everyone present here, that is all the three sections, to, to clap your hands together. Okay, let's do it. One, two, and three. Now was that loud and noticeable? Yes. Similarly in life, we all have certain things, certain changes that we can work on. Small changes can make a big difference in your life. I'm not going to talk about such major changes, but I'm going to talk about a simple yet time-saving change that I have made in my life. It has helped me save seven hours a week. How many of you here use your phone on the toilet just sitting there extending the duration of your toilet visit? Many, right? And to your surprise, it also has a study to support it. A survey done by Viogard, a leader in UVC technology, found out that 93% of young adults admit to use their phone on the toilet. Apart from the wastage of time, it also has a lot of medical disadvantages. A urologist stated that it distracts your brain from what your body needs in terms of bathroom functions. Apart from this, it also has many medical disadvantages, like it can cause constipation, hemorrhoids, pelvic bone pain, and a lot more. Let's not get into the detailed medical part from now. But from this, we do understand that changing a small habit as simple as not taking my phone to the toilet, not only am I saving a lot of time, but also benefiting my body. Seven hours a week is no joke. That's literally equal to watching Kabhi Khushi Kabhi Gum twice a week. I guess it's better to watch Jaya Bachchan for seven hours rather than wasting your seven hours on the toilet. Jokes apart, but similarly, we have so many things in our life that we can work on, like doing your bed right after you wake up or washing your dishes right after your meal. All these changes might look small, but when all of this is put together, it can make a big difference in your life. I'm not going to tell you to get up one day and decide to change everything. Start with something small, and eventually those minute little changes can make a big difference in your life. So we all have so many things that we want to like change in our life, but it takes a lot of time to do it. And usually when we start to bring in change, we often look for instant results. Change takes time to show, and takes even longer to get evident. And usually during the phases while we feel low, we usually start losing our consistency. Consistency is the key to everything you aim to achieve in your life. Day one is as important as the last day. The results that you see on your exam are not because of the hard work that you decide to do on the day before your exam. It's an accumulative effort and hard work from day one where you start making a schedule or even start reading the first page is as important as the final revision before the day of your exam. I'm not going to talk about any such big changes as we already know that we have to bring in changes by ourselves. And also there's this uh, one, one thing that, for example, like when we are losing our consistency, we start feeling that we are about to, uh, like we feel like we, we want to give up. As you all know that I'm a content creator who makes relatable and uh, funny reels, okay, at least tries to be funny at times. So you know that uh, even while making content, there are times when I feel that things are not working out for me, and I feel that there are months where I feel that I have seen no growth and days where I feel like giving up. 
But on the other hand, I have seen days with enormous amount of growth with every other video hitting a million views. But in between these two phases, there is this one thing that I keep reminding myself by asking, am I the most talented creator on the platform? No. Am I the most hardworking creator on the platform? No. But am I consistent? Yes. Am I trying to make myself better? Am I trying to make myself closer to my goal, at least by a step? Yes. Similarly, like when certain things don't work out, it's not like you stop doing that whole thing together. Like for example, if I, if I feel low and I start like losing my consistency and if I give up, I wouldn't be here in front of you all today. I make content because I love to. I make content because it makes me happy. Every comment that I receive, it makes me feel great. I get to explore new things, I get to meet new people. And also, sometimes people ask me, Nihal, do you love the attention that you get? To be honest, I love the attention that I get. It, it does feel great to wake up with 10 messages saying, Nihal, I like you. Nihal, you look cute, but, but, that's a complete different thing that out of those 10 messages, seven are from boys, so <laughs> it doesn't matter. A few weeks ago, we had a small get together where one of my friend recalled a small video of mine and they all started laughing. And seeing them laugh made me extremely happy. In the world that we live in today, there are very few things that makes us happy. You should do things that make you happy things that sat satisfy and complete the inner you. All of us here might have certain things that we love to do. One might like singing, one might like dancing, one might like even to like travel or even reading a book. If you all remember, when we were young, we were, ma we were made to feel guilty for having hobbies. People made us believe that things like these add no value to our life. But what people don't understand is that Things like these are basic life necessities. Why do we always have to associate sleeping to being lazy? People out there make you feel that you are lazy just because you sleep. Humans at least need seven to eight hours of sleep every day. Sleeping is literally a human way of healing. I still don't understand that why our society takes pride in burnout. You don't have to burn out to be productive. You don't have to sacrifice your sleep to be productive. You don't have to keep your hobbies aside to be productive. There is no such rule that states in order to gain one thing, you have to lose another. There is always a way to find a, a, a neutral path. There is always a, a way that you can work out. There's a way in between. Another important aspect of life that is very crucial in our life is the people around you, your friend circle. When I talk about friend circle, I'm not talking about the quantity. It's about the quality that truly matters. This reminds me of an unpleasant memory back, back from my school days. I was probably 14 years back then. If you all remember, during your annual school functions, like your annual sports day or any other function in your school, whenever you win something, for example, like a medal or a prize, usually with the certificate, they add a small gift. It could be like a book or like an encyclopedia or any other general knowledge book for that fact. Me, on the other hand, was given a book with the title named How to Make Friends. At, at first, I thought like it could be a coincidence. But later, when I met the teacher who was in charge of the prize distribution, she told that she had added that book on purpose as she has seen me with only few friends. First, I laughed at it, but now when I think about it, I see that how our society, particularly the standards set by society, has affected our mental well-being. You don't need to have 10 or 15 friends in your group to uh, feel happy or to feel complete. It's not like someone has ordered you to form a cricket team and become a gr big group. You just need few people to be happy. A couple of supportive friends are much better than a large unsupportive group of friends. Even when I started with content creation, people made fun about it. They made me feel that I was doing something wrong. They made me feel that I was doing something that I shouldn't be doing. But my goal and my 
thoughts and my ideas have always been clear that this is what I want to do. This is what that truly makes me happy. And my, my ideas and my goals, like even when I feel low, I keep, I keep reminding myself that this is what I want to do. So I failed my sixth class. I was sent out of school because of that. You know, right, how schools, like they start filtering out students before they reach the 10th class in order for the school to have the perfect 100% 10th board results. I've never shared this with anyone. And before I came on the stage, my mom was like, are you sure, Nihal, do you want to show this side of you that you failed? But I, I think that's something that completes me. But when I was sent out of the school, not sent out, basically they kicked me out of school. And later I was sent to a boarding school. And before my parents left, my mom explained me how this could be a, f a new start for me. Like, I don't have to think about the past. This, people do not know me. And this could be a fresh start for me. And she made me explain how if I put my mind into something, I can definitely achieve it. After that day, I made my mind. I worked extremely hard. And somehow, things fell into place. Things started to work out for me. And surprisingly, I was school first in 10th boards. And, and not only that, and not only that, I was also the school head boy. And after the school ended, I was awarded the student of the year as well. So, thank you. So from being sent out of school for failing to being the school first in 10th, and now doing one of the toughest degree that is medical, so the one thing that made a difference in this journey, you can call it like an effort or maybe the urge to bring in a change within. It's that one goal, that one impulse, that one step that you take can change everything for you. You do not have to do it for others. You do not have to do it to please someone. You have to do it for you. You have to, if, if your parents are happy and you are happy, you do not have to worry about what others have to say. I do agree that it takes a lot of time to come to a phase in life where you actually stop caring about what others have to say. But when you reach that point, it feels amazing. It feels great. You do not have to compromise to fit in. You will find people who will have the same thoughts as yours. People who will appreciate your presence. People who will love and support you for being the true you. Even when our foundation started, so when our foundation started, like people asked me like, Nihal, is this even necessary? Do you think even, will this even work out? We often keep stressing and complaining about the things that we don't have in life. For example, we keep complaining about the way we look or the things that we don't have in life. But have you ever appreciated the basic things in your life, like the ability to walk or the ability to talk? So can everyone in the audience just raise your both hands together simultaneously? And now, can you keep it down? Would you believe me if I say people out there are paying 100 to 200 dollars an hour just to be able to do this? 100 to 200 dollars an hour just to be able to do this. So a few weeks ago, I had my physiotherapy rotation going on where we usually get to see young children with neurodevelopmental disorders like autism spectrum disorder where to even perform a single task like moving a pen or to even identify a color, or to even walk is a huge task for them. We should truly be grateful for everything that we have in our life. We often keep like complaining that we don't have this in our life, like, or the way we look. If you ever feel that there's something missing in your life, or you think that you have not, you're not blessed with something, just go out, look out and see that there are so many people out there who are struggling to have a single meal a day, and just to get a piece of bread. So we should truly be grateful that we have everything in our life, we are healthy and we have proper food and we have everything in our life that we people dream of. So just like the experiment we did in the beginning, like how together we can make a big difference. I can do things you cannot, you can do things that I cannot, but together we can do great things. To everyone listening, let this be a reminder. Your dreams are valid no matter who you are or where you are from or what your current state is. Just work hard, be consistent, and be grateful to people. Never ever take anything for granted in life. Life is short, make the most out of it. Thank you. Thank you, thank you.